Hello, my name is Ashlyn Conlon and I represent the UK Advertising Export Group, or UK AEG as we like to call it for short, and you'll hear people reference it throughout the panel, I'm sure. Um, we work in partnership with DIT and our aim is to support international growth for UK advertising and marketing services. Over the years, global clients have been drawn to the UK for many reasons, including the fact that the UK is the most awarded advertising hub per capita, that talent aspires to work in the UK, bringing with them an excellent knowledge of international markets. The UK is also the world's most advanced digital advertising economy, third only in size to the US and China. And lastly, but certainly not least, the UK is home to some of the world's leading storytellers with a unique culture of delivering effectiveness through creativity. As we emerge from lockdown, those reasons still ring very true. UK advertising with its brilliant combination of strategic, creative, technological and production capabilities will play a crucial role in the recovery for the economy and for brands all around the world. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by three companies from the UK AEG community who have made their business a global one. They will discuss the challenges and opportunities that come with an international new business strategy. So Angus, perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, um, I'm Angus Light. I'm a producer and co-founder of Locate Productions. We are a service production company. Um, we were set up in 2006, um, based in London, and we've been working with international clients shooting here in the UK, um, as well as UK um, ad agency brand clients shooting abroad. Um, we're a team of about 15 producers, location scouts, fixers, and we've shot in over 30 countries around the world. Lovely. And Jemima? Hi, I'm Jemima, I'm Deputy MD at Adam and Eve DDB. Uh, we are a creative agency based in London. Um, there's about 450 of us working with clients in the UK, including John Lewis Partnership, Virgin Media and the UK government, as well as uh, global brands such as EA Sports, Diageo, PlayStation, Volkswagen and Unilever. And Steve? I'm uh, Steve Hyde. Um... CEO of 360 Exec. It's an executive search company. Uh, we tend to place right at the top end of C-suite in global client companies, global agency groups, um, and platforms. Uh, we also work with startups, helping them get off the ground, and we introduce company to company to create the sort of communities that help businesses grow. So you've all mentioned uh, global or different countries that you've worked in, and I'm incredibly curious. Is that something that happened organically through word of mouth or was it a planned strategy? Perhaps um, Jemima, you'd like to go first? Um, all of the above, really. Um, Volkswagen, Mars and Unilever and others are long standing global clients of our network, which we have grown organically. Um, some clients such as PlayStation, we've won through intermediary led pitch processes um, and EA Sports was a um, as an example of a direct approach. So, yeah, all of the above. And Angus, is that the same case for you? Um, pre pretty much all our work is, is word of mouth, uh, reputation and led referrals, really. We've built up um, sort of tr trusted clients from the US who come and shoot here in the UK and, and use us to also facilitate shooting in, in Europe. Um, and we've got a, a great network of both clients, but also production contacts around Europe that we use when we shoot over there, but also come and use us when we shoot here. Um, it's It's been word of mouth, many have been in this industry since the late 90s, and um, it's slowly built up from there, really. Um, and Steve, how, how has it been for you? Is it word of mouth or was it a planned strategy? Um, it, it sort of evolved organically, really. Uh, I'd spent 20 odd years in the advertising industry and agencies, so I had pretty good networks of contacts across clients and, uh, and fellow colleagues in agency. But many of the senior positions that we were starting to do uh, were global positions or um, EMEA positions based out of London. And, and frankly, the best candidate for a, a big job could be anywhere in the world. So our reach was inevitably global. Um, because of the level that we work at, our clients are our candidates and our candidates are our clients. And so the, the natural evolution of that meant that we, we, we ended up morphing into being a global company, um, working from Buenos Aires to Shanghai. Um, and I think we're just following the pattern of the way that the industry is evolving and changing anyway. 
so do you all feel that that obviously has made you all sort of put its influence what your new business strategy is when you're having team meetings over the you know since that all happened angus i know that we you and i have spoken about this before how how it started off as something through word of mouth and then it's now something that you guys talk about on a regular basis yeah i mean it's um increasing the uh, the amount of servicing work we do for international clients shooting here in the uk is something we're you know really keen to to develop and um and improve we um we feel we've got a good reputation in the us out of new york um but we're really keen on you know expanding in places like china and japan um as well as reinforcing um our reputation in europe strategy working with uk aeg um, is a great opportunity for us to do that to, to actually formulate more of a plan rather than relying on um, organic reputation based um, uh, business. I'm sure other people will be keen to know this, but how many of you have set up offices out of the UK or are you running everything from the London HQ? Um, Jemima, if I go to you first. Um, I mean, it depends what the, the model is. Um, where we have a centralised model, um, everything's run out of the UK and we might tap into our in-house uh, trans creation and translation AD, a, a agency to adapt central assets. Or we might have more of a local global model with a client where we use our network to tap into local insight. Um, but it's all run centrally out of our London office. It just depends on the client how much we work with other agencies in our network to make the global work. And Steve, have you um, set up offices outside of London or are you running everything from, from here? Um, we run the headhunting operation out of London uh, and we travel. Um, so we will go wherever we have to go. I travel a heck of a lot um, other than just recently. Um, but in some of the other companies I run, we set up offices. It's just about the nature of the business. When it comes to making the big decisions, uh, what's been interesting about COVID is the face-to-face and ultimately you are making judgments. Um, so we've got some interesting learning, which I suspect we'll come on to in our conversation, but we can run for everything perfectly well out of London, but we travel. And Angus for Locate Productions, how, how does it work for you? Um, we, we, we don't have offices set up in um, other areas of the world uh, at the moment, but we, we work with production partners. So um, we will team up with um, other production teams in say New York, facilitating shoots there. And likewise, they'll work with us over here. Um, something we're keen to, to develop is perhaps for the route of working with representatives in, in other territories and other, other countries who can um, effectively help reach new clients um, for us. Um, rather than setting up <coughs> offices over there because we, we feel collaborating with um, the, the global production network um, has benefits rather than actually setting up in those individual countries at this point. So Jemima, you guys won uh, a big award at Lions Live this week. Uh, congratulations on becoming European Agency of the Decade. Um, Thank you. What are the key factors in uh, when it comes to international new business how important are awards such as lions live um yeah i mean they're important in terms of they put your work on the global stage and obviously the can can lines um week is the biggest global event in the in the advertising calendar um so yeah you know that your work's going to be exposed to clients all over the world so that's important um but it's obviously not the the be all and end all, um, you know, it's, uh, our new business strategy um, is, um, you know, it, it's really about uh, networking and relationships um, and um, presenting the, the best team, um, the right team for that client. So an example, um, we pitched and won Samsung in North America and they actually um, required us to set up an agency in New York to service it they wanted on the ground. Um, we'd obviously already worked with clients in North America, but we'd always done it out of London. Um, so um, our leadership team from the UK presented, uh, won the pitch, um, and instead of saying, okay, great, we've got the business, let's create an office and um, and put uh, US talent in there that haven't met the client, we sent over the business director who won 
the uh, who led and won the pitch in the UK. So he set up the office. He's still there. Our UK leadership team who um, who run the London office also run the New York office and split their time. We share creative resource. Um, so we, you know, the client bought into us. But even though we've set up an agency in New York, we they still bought into those people who are there. And Angus, for you guys, what what do you think are the important factors? Is there is there any big awards that you go for, or is it something else that you sort of hold as a priority? I, I think I think for us, it's perhaps more our portfolio of work that um, we, we that, that sort of you know sells us. We 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 assume that you know that the, the bigger, more challenging, you know, interesting projects we've worked on effectively uh, we, we use as a sort of a marketing tool really um rather than perhaps you know awards at our level so we we worked on the you know that this girl can campaign um you know a few years ago and that was a fantastic project and you know to, to be able to use that as um as a, as a campaign that we've we've helped produce it, it won it, it no doubt it won many awards but it's it's a you know well-known campaign we, we've done you know very well known i don't BBC and um, you know other interesting projects. And I think a strong portfolio that shows off the locations that the UK has to offer, that shows the diversity of casting the UK has to offer, is is perhaps more key to us. Um, and Steve, for you, I'm really keen to know what you think. Uh, why, why does everyone aspire to work in the UK? Um, <clears throat> I think for a long time the UK has been a hub for perfectly legitimate reasons, to be honest with you. The density of talent across all the various disciplines, the fact that those, those talented people are able to work in such a community, um, as the UK as a whole, but particularly in London, um, I think makes people want to naturally migrate here to learn, to learn intensively, and then to be able to take that learning on. The fact that you can work with world-class brands, mostly in their HQ or close to HQ. You can have the influence of that and then take that anywhere in the world. The standards in the UK are very high and they have been for a long time. Um, the ability to work together collectively, I think is also evident. And our ability to travel means that that exposure works out uh, across the world. So the educational system is very positive when it comes to um, the areas of marketing and advertising. I used to lecture at Cambridge and London University and the subject matter while still at Saatchi's. And I think that's what we do. We all talk greatly about the industry as a whole and the quality of the work as an output. And that feeling is so strong. I think people from other countries want to come and imbibe that and then take that on. It'll help them advance their careers faster than they might get elsewhere. And hopefully they can make a greater contribution to the industry as a whole. And that leads me on lovely to another question that I have, which is, um, you know, why do you believe, or why do you think that the UK is viewed as the global hub of advertising? One of the things that obviously is to our benefit, and I know this from my own personal experience of working east and west, is we're right in the middle. I mean, logistically, we're in the middle of things. So when it comes to, you know, our early morning, we're picking up Asia Pacific. And when it comes to our um, early evening, we're picking up east coast and then west coast. Uh, that's to our advantage but i also think the fact that as i said you've got such density um, of talent but you also have organizational body and the uk ag is uh, increasingly now the most obvious um, evidence of that in being able to bring together all aspects of this talent and promote it uh, out to the world but i think we've got some very natural uh, opportunity and i think we've made a lot of that over the years to be honest with you but i think that the initiative around uk ag is is a really contemporary one and I think it's really timely and I think it's being done incredibly well. The, the various trade bodies that have come together and the government itself uh, is a very, very positive thing. Um, and Jemima, I can see you nodding. So would you agree with what Steve has said as to why the UK is viewed as the hub? Absolutely. And also, you know, this work speaks for itself. I think, um, as you said, um, the UK's won more can lines per capita than any other um, agency, uh, any other market. 
So that really helps in attracting talent, but also the UK has a real culture of effectiveness through creativity, um, not just creativity. So um, the UK is home to the IPA Effectiveness Awards, which are the Ad Adwell's most rigorous effective competition. Um, and I think when CAN introduced their creative um, effectiveness category, I think the, the UK won it, you know, for the, uh, for the first couple of years. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. a real that's a real pull for strategists and planners, and not just creatives. Uh, and Angus, I mean, from a pr production perspective, um, I, I think that the, the UK is. Uh, I've touched on on the diverse casting we have here um, and the range of locations. You can you can shoot a, a global campaign here in the UK um, without actually having to travel around the globe. Um, we've this year, I mean, this week, where we're actually cheating um, locations and talent for a, a German market, we've um, shot a global campaign here this year that was um, needing to cheat locations such as India, uh, Vietnam, um, US, uh, with set dressing, clever location finding, um, that can all be done. I think uh, aligned with the, the technical crew qualities and skill set here in the UK, which is you know, second to none, it's, it's a reputation as the sort of the leader uh, around the world. Um, the, the amount of films and high-end dramas that get shot here from the US is, is evidence of that. Um, so that puts the UK, you know, firmly placed, aligned with, with the, uh, the time zone um, aspect that Steve touched upon. Um, you know, it, it's a per perfect destination for brands and agencies to come and shoot global campaigns um, and moving forward to the future hopefully we can we can develop a sustainable low carbon um, advertising pr production industry here it could be a leader in, in, in global thinking that reinforces the, the UK as a destination and through the UK AEG hopefully we can maximize the, the benefits from that. The UK you know many countries view the UK as a global hub Jemima, you've touched on effectiveness. And, and as someone who has worked in various markets, I, I know that everybody does look to the UK. It, it is the golden goose. It, it knows everything about effectiveness. And, and how do you think that, that that comes about or how important to you as an agency is that culture of effectiveness? Uh, really important. I mean, creating work that drives effectiveness is essentially what we're, we're doing, what we're all about um, and, and shows that we understand um, our clients' business and are able to deliver um, on the projects that they ask us to deliver on. Um, so, you know, whether that's putting um, a minister in government or driving sales and profit or inspiring a whole generation of women uh, to, um, to, to do more sports like this girl can did. Um, but this sort of a focus on effectiveness, uh, you know, it, it doesn't just happen. It's a real educational piece that starts at the bottom and the IPA have a big um, a big educational um, sort of program um, starting when people join the industry. So it's really, really uh, drummed into people um, fr from the bottom up. Um, and in turn, that's created this culture where, um, you know, everyone really wants to make brilliant work that works. I think one of the other attributes that uh, that we have here in the UK is is a level of understanding about the business of business. I think because we've had so much exposure to just about every kind of product category across every sort of discipline, um, our understanding of the business of our clients' business, I think, is is significant. Uh, as an ex-strategist, I'm inquiring anyway. I don't want to just know the impact of what I'm doing. I want to understand the entire business that I'm doing it with. And I think from that point of view, um, we tend to build, in the UK, we tend to build partnerships with our clients rather than being purely suppliers to those clients. I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just mean that the outcome tends to be better as a result of that partnership. Um, I know from my own part, my base understanding of, of doing strategy and agency led me to see building businesses, but floating groups onto the stock market, raising millions of pounds to do startups. I don't think I could have done that without the basis of my understanding as a strategist that came out of my work in agency. And I think that's what's very evident throughout UK advertising, UK marketing, in terms of our services, our ability to partner with clients, not simply supply them. Um, and Angus? Um, yeah, I think um, where that works in, in terms of our, our sector, it, it's how we interpret a brief. Um, it's an essential 
stage of, of the production process. And uh, I think the UK being positioned where it is geographically, um, within Europe, obviously North America, closely connected with North America, but it is um, very, we're, we're very savvy in terms of um, what clients are wanting to shoot and to shoot and understanding their thinking and then putting that into practice and delivering a production um, is is a really a key aspect and i think that the uk advertising and production industries are um you know very experienced at that and, and i feel that international clients have a confidence in coming here to shoot they they, they feel um that they are in safe hands when um deciding on um, coming to the uk and, and, and planning to, to produce a, a global campaign here my next question would be if I'm interested in, in going global with my business, what are the opportunities and challenges that come along with this? But also, has, has the recent challenge with, with, with COVID, has it made it easier or so much harder? Uh, and everyone's smiling and nodding. <laughs> so, uh, Steve, I'll come to you first. Uh, it, it's certainly presented some interesting challenges. Um, uh, I think I was supposed to have been on three different continents uh, in the first three weeks of shutdown. So getting used to the fact that all of my plans were you know, up in the air and I was going to have to redo things. But as we sit today, I think I've certainly learned a lot. Um, uh, understandably, uh, the number of C-suite hires has flattened off a little bit, you could say, um, but it's opened up different areas. Um, so we've been looking at entrepreneurial growth and so on. Um, I have found it actually quite heartening that we've been able to communicate I think more easily um, less about these this sort of orchestrated conferences that we go to and there's the whole parade of that we've just been able to talk to each other in our homes I think connectivity has improved greatly and I think our willingness to be a lot more open has also improved um, there are some technical things that we've all had to get over um, reading body language over a screen is not the easiest of things which I'm used to doing when I'm face to face with somebody um, but even in the last two months, I've taken on two new chairmanships and two new non-executive director roles. I haven't physically met anybody in the companies that I've agreed to become part of. So in terms of new business, if you like, um, it's perfectly possible, uh, despite these current circumstances, it's about the way you approach it. And I think we've all learned how to improve that. And I suspect that the, the ramifications and the repercussions of COVID will produce some very positive outcomes in the way that we do business as we come out of COVID. Uh, and Angus, have have you how have you found the challenges, or or has it all been lots of opportunities? Um, and both. I mean, there's the immediate challenges of trying to shoot, you know, major campaigns with the present guidelines and restrictions in place, and to do so safely. Um, but there, we found solutions. We work closely with the APA, um, and we've put health and safety measures in place and it's possible. It shows that solutions are, can be found when challenges are placed. I think we're a, we're a very, we're a versatile, fluid industry in terms of finding solutions to challenges. Um, I think the, the whole traveling issue has been brought to the fore. Do we need to travel as much for what we do? Do as many people need to travel as much to do what we do? Do we, can we streamline crew sizes? Um, can we rethink how we use technology to produce um, campaigns on a, on a slightly different scale? But yeah, I mean, we've always had challenges and I think the solutions are generally found and um, put in place. So I don't see it as something that's gonna be detrimental to us. And um, hopefully it will, will reinforce the, the ability for the UK to be a big sort of uh, you know, destination for production industry and advertising industry. And Jemima, how has it been for you guys? Um, I mean, one of the few good things about lockdown um, and being forced to work remotely is that we've shown that we can do it and we can do it effectively. Um, we've done pitch meetings with clients in other markets remotely in the past, but not uh, sort of end to end pitch processes. And while they might not be as efficient, um, and obviously, you know, it's, it's hard to sense how people are feeling and how they like to work through a screen, um, it's definitely opened up a whole world of opportunity for global clients, which is really exciting. Um, so it's a, it's a fantastic time um, to be part of the UA, UK AEG um, so that we could, you know, come together and show that 
the UK really is open for business um, uh, more than it ever has been before. Tech is actually a wonderful enabler at the moment and that we should, uh, you know, everyone should be jumping on to, to use it to, to attract new business. Um, Steve, you sort of mentioned it, this idea of we've all gone to big events previously, you know, to, and that's been where we've generated new business leads. Um, and I guess that has all massively changed for us over the last couple of weeks because we know that everything has moved online. Uh, we are all sort of reliant on tech. You have to take time out. To, to actually attend these events and, and use the screen time. What do you think the future of new business looks like? This is a bit of crystal ball gazing now. Um, I, I think some of the tenants for uh, successfully winning new business will remain constant regardless of what's happened with COVID and technology. I think there's going to be a far greater focus on how you as a company are relevantly different. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot that's the same, you know, in a lot of areas, there's a lot that's the, same, that is the same. A lot of companies go through the same wind tunnel and they end up coming out looking the same. And I think relevant difference is incredibly important so that you stand out for positive reasons. I think what COVID has done is allowed us time to reflect on exactly what we are as companies, what we stand for, what are our truths and how do we communicate those better? Because we've had to work harder to communicate under COVID than we might otherwise do, because as you say, we done it plenty of times you stand on conference stages and you you know you speak and you, you broadcast you hope that people are listening we've had to dig a bit deeper and really get at the core of what you know what stands out i found that i've been turning down a lot of briefs because they're more of the same and i don't want us to be a volume business i want us to make positive change so i you know i, I tend to work on on jobs where there is no brief because it's it's different and therefore how do you write a brief for something you haven't got but you need active help and engagement in doing that. So we're gonna get a lot more specific, but it's the time we've had over the last three or four months to really consider relevant different and then use that as our, our main driving force. I will attend conferences in the future, but I think really to, to I guess from my point of view, because I'm quite contrary, to agitate, to throw verbal hand grenades into conferences, just to put a fire under them sometimes rather than just to go along and shake hands. I'm, I'm far less interested in that these days. And, and Angus, from a sustainability point of view, you've mentioned travel and maybe looking to reduce crew um, sizes. For you, what do you think that the future of new business looks like? Does it involve lots of travel or do you think you can now do it from the office or from home? Yeah, no, a lot of our, you know, a lot of our travel is um, dependent on where we go to shoot. Um, I think the, the last two or three months has made people stop and think a little bit more about where do you need to go for it and the impact of that, you know, of, of traveling there. The, 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 the fact that we can't has meant people have to think differently. Um, and moving forward in terms of if we, if we do want to be looking towards, you know, low carbon um, industries, then, then travel is something we need to, to consider. Um, and perhaps the, the last, the, the lockdown period might be sort of you know one of the a major stepping stone um towards that um and yeah dictating where we go and shoot um campaigns are we going to consider that a little bit and, and jemima you, you mentioned the the fact that the uk has has won so many effective awards especially at can lines i believe it was for the first we put the first three winners up or the first two winners um so, you know, what do you see the future being for around events and, and, and big conferences as a new business model? Um, in turn, I'll come back to that point in a minute, but in terms of um, what the future of global new business looks like for ad agencies, I think, you know, people will always buy into people. Um, so I think that we need to look at um, ways of being able to show uh, what people are like, um, you know, how they like to work um, and, and really give a sense of the agency's culture and personality. We're going to have to find ways of doing that through a screen um, if if it's the case that we're going to be travelling less um, and doing less face-to-face -face meetings. And, you know, we've done a couple of um, 
pitch meetings now remotely and you know we've had to really think creatively about how we show the culture of the agency we're used to having clients come in and show them around and introduce them to people not just the presenting people but pe you know the wider people that make up our agency how do we do that remotely um it's a challenge but it's also you know quite an exciting opportunity if, if conferences and awards change so maybe they're a mixture of physical and virtual you know what do you think will happen around that in terms of new business for us will it just stay the same um, yeah i think that um events and so showcases um some of the um online events that the uk AG are doing have done and are doing and have planned are brilliant um for planners and strategists um to talk about their work and and talk to audiences that perhaps they ordinarily wouldn't travel to and um, so I think you'll find maybe that, that you know, you'll have uh, more, more speakers and more opportunities for um, planners and strategists and agencies to attend those events whereby they might not be able to travel to them um, in person. Yeah. Um, and if there's any brands that are listening today that are interested in working with someone from, from UK advertising, aside from contacting you all directly, uh, what one piece of advice would you give them as a starting point? Uh, Steve? The start point is knowing what you don't know. Uh, work out what you don't know um, and look at where you can derive the greatest help in resolving that part of your business. So if, you're, if you really want to move your business forward and you're going to be progressive, you're going to be breaking new ground. And to do that, you're going to need help and assistance, um, whether that's technical help, whether it's creative help, whether it's strategic help, whether it's talent help. Um, but you've got to ask yourself the question, are you doing more of the same? Or are you doing something different? If it's different, you definitely are going to need fresh pairs of eyes on things. So where are you going to go for that? And by reputation, the UK still stands out there as having amongst the very highest standards in the world and probably the greatest access to companies in the world. So I would suggest that you come to UK AG um, and, and some of the other parties that represent UK advertising and, um, and take a pick. Thank you. And Angus, what, what, what advice would you give to any agencies or brands who are looking to come and work with, with uh, Team UK? Is it advice or is it a request? Um, uh, from a production perspective, time is, is massively valuable. Pre-production, lead-in times, you know, help us um, formulate, you know, really effective, um, successful um, productions. And <clears throat> the more time we have to, to plan to uh, pre-produce projects, the better. Um, and especially, you know, in this time where we have these extra challenges, the, the COVID or post-COVID um, era, that will benefit us all, I think. Um, but I think, yeah, you know, we're, I think the UK AG is, is made up of a great network of companies and um, the talent is definitely here. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, time is one thing I think that benefits us all. Um, and Jemima? Um, I think just consider the UK when you're putting together your your long list or short list of agencies. Um, we've shown the last three months that, um, you know, w working with a UK agency based in London is exactly the same as working with one in New York. Really, there's no difference. Um, it's all remote. So there should be no reason why if you're looking for um, a, a uh, an agency in your market or internationally that you can't consider the UK as part of your list of agencies um, around the world. Uh, and then on the flip side, because we know that the UK government is about to go into overdrive to, to boost the importance of the creative sector. So if there's any companies that are listening today who, who maybe in the past have been considering going global, or, 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 you know, now from the back of this, they're like, right, this is a strategy that we want to take. Where, where, where should they start? Um, probably on the UK AG website. Um, if they're looking at the UK, um, you've obviously got all the resources there. You've got a list of companies who are top of their game. Um, it's probably a good place to start, um, depending on whether you're looking for um, talent or production facilities or, or strategic or creative work. Um, go on there, have a look, um, see what's on offer, see the skills um, and um, yeah, create your sort of short or long list from there. Um, and Angus? 
Um, I suppose have a have a clear clear message, a clear clear idea, a concept of what you do and, and who you are. Um, I suppose that that makes sense in a, in a range of business environments, but um, I, I think that that then effectively defines your your sort of your your business approach and. Um, the clearer that is, probably the more successful you'll be. Thank you. And uh, um, Steve? Um, I, I go back to, I guess, when I was looking to start my first company when I came out of agency. And uh, I can recall going, I used to go to all the rugby internationals. I was heading off to Twickenham and there was the same group of five of us. And there was a chap who owned Chrysalis and Wasps and Queen's Park Rangers Football Club. Um, and uh, Lord Ailing of Soho and uh, Sir George Martin, who's obviously not with us anymore, but managed the Beatles or produced for the Beatles. And uh, they were all really successful. And I was thinking about starting my first company. And I, I sat in the back of the minibus as we were heading to Twickenham and I asked them um, if they could give me any advice. And Sir George said, um, my dear boy, get great advice. And my initial reaction was, yeah, thanks, George. Um, but actually it was the best thing he could have said. And to this day, Whenever I'm looking to break new ground, whenever I'm looking to grow anything for my company or anybody else's, it's advice. Get great advice. And so look to where you can get that best advice from because what follows is likely to be successful. And you know, I have to advocate for the UK AG in that, in that sense because it's a hub that is rich with great capability and great advice. And that's the best place to start.